Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see about the topic phases of compiler in compiler design. From our previous lecture, we know that compiler is a software program that converts the high level source code into low level machine code that can be executed by the computer hardware. This process of translating the source code into machine code involves several phases which are collectively known as phases of compiler. There are six phases of compiler, namely lexical analysis, syntax analysis or parsing, semantic analysis, intermediate code generation, code optimization and code generation. Now, let us see the architecture of phases of compiler. Here we have six phases. The first phase has the input I level language and the last phase gives the output as assembly code. Symbol table acts as the bookkeeping for all the phases. So it is connected to all the phases and error handling also connected to all the phases which handles the errors. Now let us see the phases of compiler one by one. Lexical analysis. This is the initial phase of the compiler. It scans the source code and transforms the input program into series of tokens. It reads the input code character by character. For example, consider this line of code string name equal to sephron. The lexical analyzer would read this line of code character by character and generate seven tokens as the output. How it is seven tokens means the string or the data type is considered as one token. The variable name name is considered as one token. Assignment operator one token. Open codes one token the entire string saffron one token, close quotes as one token and semicolon as one token. So totally we have seven tokens and all these tokens are recorded in the symbol table. So the symbol table is thus generated in this space and to populated with tokens generated. It is a data structure that holds the record for each identifier in the source code. So therefore the input to the lexical analyzer is source code and output is stream of tokens. Next phase is syntax analysis. It is the second phase. It takes the tokens as input and generates the parse tree as output. In this phase, the parser checks that the expression made by the tokens is syntactically correct or not. So if any syntax errors are there, it is not passed to the next phase. So the next phase is semantic analysis. This is the third phase. It checks whether the parse tree generated by the syntax analysis is following the rules of the language. Every programming language will have its own rules. It also does the type checking, label checking and flow control checking. So the input to the semantic analysis is parse tree and the output is annotated parse tree or annotated syntax tree. Next phase is intermediate code generation. It generates the intermediate code from the source code. This code is generated between the high level language and the machine language. It should be generated in such a way that it can be easily translated into the target machine code. Next phase is code optimization. So this is an optional phase. It is used to improve the intermediate code so that the output of the program could run even faster and take less space. It removes the unnecessary lines of the code and arranges the sequence of statements in order so that it can speed up the execution of the program. The last phase is code generation. It takes the optimized intermediate code as the input and generates the target machine code as the output. So these six phases are grouped into two phases. One phase is analysis phase and another one is synthesis phase. In analysis phase, we have from lexical analyzer to intermediate code. And in synthesis phase, we have from uh, intermediate code to code generation. So this is considered as front end and synthesis phase is considered as the back end. So source code is given to analysis phase and the synthesis phase will generate the machine code. So we have discussed about the phases of compiler and grouping of phases. Let us see one example for understanding the phases of compiler. So consider this line of code price equal to amount plus rate into 50. We assume that all are float variables. So this code is fed into the lexical analyzer. It reads it character by character and generates the tokens. So price is considered as one identifier. So it is named as ID1, assignment operator taken as it is, amount is ID2, 
plus is taken as it is, rate is ID 3, multiplication symbol and then 50 is taken as it is. So, these tokens are fed into the syntax analyzer. So, syntax analyzer will generate the pass tree as the output. So, the pass tree is given here. So, this part is left hand side of the expression and this part is right hand side of the expression. So, ID 1 equal to assignment operator. The right hand side is given here. So, ID 3 into 50. So, ID 3 is multiplied with 50 and then this entire thing is added with ID 2 and it is assigned to ID 1. So, this pass tree is fed into the semantic analyzer which generates the annotated pass tree or annotated syntax tree. Here, as we mentioned, it can perform the type conversion. So, we know that all the variables are uh, real variables. So, we are converting the 50 which is integer to real. So, this is the modified pass tree. This is further fed into intermediate code generator. So, here the three address code is generated. Three address means maximum we can have only three addresses. So, here first we are assigning int to real that is the type conversion is assigned to the temporary variable temp1 and now temp1 contains this conversion. So, that is multiplied with id3. So, id3 into 50. So, 50 is available in temp1. So, it is multiplied with id3 and then stored in temp2 and temp3 is equal to id2 plus temp2. So, in temp2 we have this uh, entire thing and we have to add this id3 into 50 with id2. So, temp2 is added with id2. Now, the result of this is stored in temp3. So, finally, it has to be stored to id1. So, temp3 is uh, transformed to id1. Now, this 3 address code is fed into the code optimizer which performs the optimization. So, these 4 lines of code is reduced to 2 lines. So, how it is reduced means, so we are assigning this id3 into 50 entirely, this id3 into 50.0. So, instead of type conversion, we are directly converting it as 50.0 and then we are multiplying it with id3 and storing it in temp1. And after that, we are adding up this temp1 with id2 and storing the result in id1. So, we have reduced the lines of code. So, this will speed up the execution. So, this code is fed into the code generator and that is generating the mnemonic codes or assembly codes. So, here first we are moving, move f means move float. So, we are r and all here we call it as registers. So, here id3, id3 is moved to r2. So, the result of id3 will be there in r2 and we are multiplying this r2 with 50. So, r2 contains id3, we have to multiply the id3 with 50. So, r2, 50 multiplication is done and the result will be available in r2. And what we have to do, we have to add this multiplication with id2. So, before that we have to move that id2 to another register. So, id2 is moved to r1 and add float r1 comma r2. So, r1 is having the id2 and r2 is having the multiplication id3 into 50. So, both are added and the result is stored in r1. Finally, we move the result of r1 to id1. So, this is the symbol table which records the information about the identifier. So, we have price, amount and rate. So, all these are recorded in the symbol table. So, thus we have seen the Example for phases of compiler. Thank you.